everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews. I've gotten a lot of requests lately to go more in depth in how I uh, adjust my patterns and stuff like that. So a little bit further beyond just construction and also looking into um, pattern adjustments. So I'm going to show you using this bra makery Chloe bra. This is the most recent one that I've done. And I'm just sort of like walk you through step by step with how I go about making this pattern work for me. So the first step that I want to do is look at my wire. So I know from personal experience um, that this wire is what works best for me. This is the 40R that's available from Bra Maker Supply. I buy these in bulk. I buy them about 12 to 24 pairs at a time just because I like to always have these wires available. Um, and the reason that I came to this wire by doing a breast root trace, uh, I will pop up a link card up here of how to do a breast root trace for yourself. Uh, this is the best way to figure out which wire is going to work for your body. Um, when it comes to making a bra that fits you perfectly, you want to fit the wire to yourself. And then I always use this wire and then I modify my patterns to accommodate this wire. So instead of using what the pattern suggests I should do, I know this is what fits me. This is what I'm going to work with. So in the past, um, I've altered my pattern to use my wire altered my cradle and I can I'll, again I'll pop up a link over here that can show you how to do that but lately I've been doing another method which I think is a little bit easier and I'm going to show that to you today and it's what I used when I ended up making this bra so when I measured myself using the pattern designer's directions I always like to measure myself the way the pattern designer intends because I feel like she knows her pattern he or she knows her pattern um, and that's the best place to start so in this particular pattern, I was measured at a 38A. And a 38A, there's a uh, wire graph that's included in the pattern, and that corresponds with a 36 wire. So that's what I've highlighted here in yellow. This is the wire that she says, she says I should be using. Now if I take the wire that works for my body and I line it up with, <coughs> line it up with that, you can see it doesn't really work. Um, it splays out much too, much too far, and it's a little bit longer, both in the underarm and the center front side. That's not surprising to me. Uh, my body, I have a, what's called a wide root, so that just means that like my tissue is spread further this way than most people. So what I just do is I bring my wire down and I check all of the different ones until I find a wire that actually works well. So in this case, the 40 wire on her chart works really well with my wire. You can see that the length um, in the center front is absolutely perfect. And it also looks like just about the right length in the underarm side. And then the curvature of the wire is a good match. Uh, if I put it over top there, you can barely see that green at all. You just have a little bit extra splay in my wire on this side, but that's okay. So this is a good uh, example showing you that even though I am not using her wires, she it's great that she includes the wire chart in along with the pattern uh i've seen a couple of of patterns lately that are doing this and i think it's really really helpful even if you're not buying your wires it's great to have this reference to understand what the pattern is drafted for so in my case because my 40 wire my 40 r wire matches her 40 r2 wire so well what i'm going to do is print out the cradle for this particular wire size. So even though I'm a 38A, I'm going to be using the cradle pieces for the 38C. So in this case, I've got my outer frame I'm gonna use from the 38C, the bridge piece from the 38C, and you can also use the back band from the 38C. So now that I know I don't have to do any other touching to, to that to start out with, I'm going to use, I'm just going to, because these are going to, these are drafted to work with this size wire. It should work without me doing any extra changes to it. So I'm going to use all the 38C for the, the bridge, the outer cradle, and my band. So that's the cradle taken care of. So I don't have to make any more adjustments to make it fit this wire because she's already intended it to fit something that looks exactly like that. So most of my pattern alterations these days 
come in the form of the cups. So when I'm making my first muslin, I will use that, that cheated uh, size of the cradle that works with my wire and I will make it up using the cups that that I measured into. So even though I'm using a 38C cradle, I'm gonna go ahead and use the 38A cups and then just see what it looks like. So when I did that, and I had, I had my bra made up and then I tried it on and I can see areas that I need to improve. So in this case, I wanted to make this, this amount of fabric less. Um, I had some gaping along the neckline here and here. I also had some issues because obviously the cup that I was using was an A cup and then the cradle I was using is a C cradle. So in order to get it to to line up perfectly right here, I had to cut down the cradle a bit, um, and that meant that my wire was extending, you know, a little bit beyond where it should have been. So I needed, I knew I needed to increase my wire line here on my cups. However, when I tried it on, I did think that the cross cup seam, so like this distance from here to here, looked really well, and I felt like the volume that I was getting in my lower cup worked really well. So I didn't want to go up the whole cup size because I felt like the volumes were working for me down here. I just need to cheat this wire line a little bit longer and I needed to take in some fabric along the neckline. So here we have the cut piece E. This is our upper cup and that's going to correspond to this piece of fabric right here that extends along the neckline. So if you only need to take a little bit in, like say a quarter of inch or something like that, like you can tell because when you, you try on your tester bra, you can just pinch out the excess here and figure out how much extra you have. So if you just have a little bit to take out, the easiest way to sort of cheat it would just be to you know, draw a line. You wanna make sure that you, you keep, I keep the cross cut seam the same, but you wanna take out some of the distance along that straight edge neckline. So one easy way to cheat it would just be to, to start at that same corner, but then cheat it in a little bit here. And then also make sure that you're drawing in your new seam allowance. That would be the new seam allowance. So this would be where you would sew and this would be the end of your fabric and then you would cut this portion of the, the pattern piece off and would go away. So that's a really easy cheat way to make it just slightly tinier if you just wanna um, bring in that neckline a little bit. Conversely, if you want to make it a little bit longer, so say this is cutting into your breast tissue, you would just do the opposite. So you would, again, Keep your cross cup seam the same, but you could make it a little bit bigger, like this. Oops. And that would be your new cut piece. But in my instance on this bra, I needed to take out a significant amount of material, so I had to do a slash and spread method. So to slash and spread, I just looked at where that notch mark was, and I'm just gonna cut up a little bit, almost to the seam line, but not all the way through it. And then I'm gonna come to the other side of the cup and cut almost to that seam line, but not all the way through it. So this should be sort of familiar if you do any garment sewing, the slash and spread. And what it allows us to do is to be able to not change this distance at all, but we can make the top distance wider or shallower. Normally you just wanna make it shallower this way. So in my case for this pattern, I took it in about half of an inch like this. So I overlapped my two pieces by about half of an inch, and then I traced out what my new pattern piece was gonna look like. So you just need to trace along the bottom and then sort of like even out that curve. Right, you don't want any like sharp points. And then when it comes to the neckline, I wanna make sure that I still maintain a straight neckline because I want to be able to use lace and stuff on it. So I just connect my corner to my corner. 
And that's gonna be my new uppercut piece. So this, this bottom line where the, the cross cup seam is hasn't changed any any length, nor has our side seams have changed any length. All I've done is make it smaller along the neckline. So the next step I wanted to do is increase this wire line, because as you remember, I was getting a little bit of that wire sticking out above there, the this because my cups were too small for the wire that I was using. But my volume was good, so I didn't wanna change that. So again, just like we did for this uppercut piece, there's two like methods that you could do. If it's, if it's just a small amount, um, I've done this frequently on a lot of my bras, and that is just to cheat it out a little bit. Right, so here's my, my current seam line. I would cheat it out slightly, so I have a new seam line. This way I'm getting longer along my wire, right? The wire is running this way. So I made that longer, but I'm not touching anything else in the bra. But for this pattern, I needed to increase it by a significant amount and that really wasn't working for me. I did try it one time like this um, and the issue was that it was, I was having to cheat this out so much so like I was having to cheat it out kind of, yeah, it's, that's pretty exaggerated. Um, I was having to cheat it out so much that it was sort of forming a point like this when it was meeting with the cradle. And then that point is not something because you, you're gonna want underarm elastic. So it's meeting the cradle and, and forming a point like this. And then once I was putting my underarm elastic in, I was sort of like shaving off of that point and then I was losing all of that extra distance that I needed. So I, I thought about it for a couple nights until I, it dawned on me that I could use the same slash and spread method with this as I did with the uppercut. So just like we did with the uppercut, this one doesn't have a, little, a notch to go to, but I'm just going to pick a plot in the middle. Basically, I do the same thing where I cut across but not all the way to the seam line. And then do it like that. And then I can just pivot it by as much as I need to increase that wire line by. So in my case, I needed to increase my wire line by about half of an inch like that. Then all you need to do is trace your new pattern piece like we did with the upper cup I traced along this side I did make this one straight and I made sure to measure it again this pattern in particular is really nice because she's included all of the millimeter measurements of all of this the different sides so it's a good way to like check your work to make sure yep I'm still 97 millimeters and then for this bottom again you just sort of like ease it so that you get a nice even curve. So that's gonna be my new lower cut piece. And it's gonna give me what I wanted, which is not changing the cross cup seam at all, right? I haven't touched this distance at all, or this distance, this is still the same. All I've done is increase the wire line down here. So that cup is gonna give me more coverage up along the side. So that's how I would increase the wire line, but sometimes people have what's called an omega shaped breast. So if you think of, you know, the omega sign from Greek lettering, um, what it means is that the root or where it attaches to your body is smaller than the volume would suggest. So this is actually the opposite of the way mine is. So if you think of mine from a bird's, bird's eye view, what I have is something like this, which takes up a wide space and like a normal one would go like this. So mine's spread out, um, but you have omegas where it is pinched in where it, where it connects to the body 
and has a large volume. And in that case, you would actually do the exact opposite. You would find the cup size that uses your volume that you want, and then you would, instead of spreading, you would slash and overlap. And that's how you would decrease the wire line while still maintaining the volume in the center of the cup. So after making my first muslin, I noticed that the bra band was a little wide, or a little too long, and what does that mean? So let's see, let's see if I can draw this for you. So if you have your purse in here, right, there's your arms. I never claim to be a good drawer. Um, so you want the band to sort of go straight across the back, and there's the straps. But in my case, the band was starting to like ride up like that, like a like a rainbow across the back of your your chest. And so that's how I knew that the band was too long. So luckily, that is a really easy fix. Take some scissors and then make a cut that is straight down there and then you could overlap it by a half of an inch or whatever you wanted, however much you wanted to take it down. And that would be your new band piece. If your band is a little bit too tight, you can just do the opposite of that, which is cut it down the middle, spread it apart, and then trace trace it off as well. And then trace it, you know, making that jump over the distance. So making the band smaller or larger is just a really easy thing to do. A lot of times I will err on the side of making my band too large. Um, because I can always cut it down from the hook and eye side later after I try it on. It's really easy to just take those hook, hooks and eyes off and all you just have to do is take the that strap piece off and you can cut this in and make it smaller. But if you make the band too small to start with, you're kind of stuck. There's nothing you can do to sort of make it cheat it out to be longer. So once I sewn up that third twall, I noticed that I was seeing, now that the neckline was fitting, great and the wire was fitting in there it wasn't sticking out any further than it needed to be so great i had fixed all of those problems but now i was noticing just a little bit of excess material in this area right here between that apex point and the center front but it wasn't a huge amount of material so i knew i could just alter my pattern slightly and make the final bra without having to do another twall so i pinched in the fabric just to understand how much i needed to take out and i want to say it was about a quarter of an inch um, and like I said it was it didn't extend into this outer cut piece it was all all in the center front where I was having excess fabric so most like the the breast tissue was sitting well into the side of the bra but I just had a little bit of hollow space right here so I picked up those two cut pieces so here we have C and this one is corresponded to here and this curve right there represents this portion of that cut piece. So all I needed to do is just make this a little less curvy. I wanted to keep my same starting and ending point, but just sort of shave off a little bit of that curve, made it a little bit straighter, and that way I take out some of that excess fabric from that cut piece. And then of course I, I draw in my seam allowance line on there. And then I want to do the same thing on the upper cut piece as well. Uh, I know that this notch that's in the cut piece corresponds with where it the seam of this cup attaches. So this curve here should fit in between this distance here. Um, so you could straighten this out as well. However, this is a pretty straight piece on the bottom. You can see there's a little bit that you could take out like this. But I think all I did is just go in with like some scissors, if I'm honest. I didn't even measure this one and just took up the tiniest little sliver out up here as well. And that was the last change that I made to the pattern. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and understand a little bit more about how I go about fixing the pattern. Not, not fixing, but like fitting it to myself and getting things to work the way that I want them to. Um, if you guys have enjoyed this, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to do a little bit more of these intensive bra fitting sessions with my future bras. Take care.